rocky shores are valuable habitats with high biodiversity, which makes them great places to explore at low tide. Structures made from rock and concrete for flood risk management and erosion control are also home to plants and animals. Whilst we recognize the value that the organisms can provide, what is equally fascinating is how the organisms interact with the rocks that they grow on. As geomorphologists, we're interested in landscapes and how these change through time through processes such as weathering and erosion. And in rocky shore environments such as this, you've got a particular influence of the tides coming in and out, you've got the salts in the seawater and in the air, and these factors can break down rocks relatively quickly. What makes rocky shores even more interesting to geomorphologists are all the different types of organisms that grow here, all the plants, all the animals, all the microorganisms. Some organisms accelerate the breakdown of rock. This includes things like limpets that we can see in this rock pool. And they're effectively scraping off layers of rock as they're feeding. These biological processes can dominate the geomorphology of entire shorelines, particularly on rocks such as limestone and chalk. Compared to what we know about the organisms themselves, how the plants and animals interact with each other, and how they act to break down the rock, causing weathering and erosion, much less is known about how the plants and animals may actually protect the rocks that they live on. This has been the focus of our research at the universities of Exeter, Oxford and Plymouth, funded by the Esme Fairburn Foundation. By looking at the surface of colonised materials, we found that seaweed acts very much like a thermal blanket. So it keeps the surface cool and stops it from drying out completely in the sun. And for structures like this, that could be really important when it comes to limiting the deterioration of the material through the action of salts. Barnacles have a similar role by trapping water on the surface of materials. And that water can evaporate when it's heated by the sun at low tide and that can reduce the extent of thermal cycling within the material itself. Our research suggests that if you can conserve and even encourage organisms to grow on the structures that we build, then as well as enhancing biodiversity, you might get some additional benefits in response, like protection of the structure itself. The challenge we now have is to fully understand both the erosive and protective influences of plants and animals on the rocks they live on and the structures we build, so that we can properly evaluate their engineering and geomorphic significance and ultimately manage the potential benefits for the environment and people.